So I'm originally from the UK, but I've been living in South Africa now for eight years this month, actually. Actually, eight years tomorrow. <laughs> um, so I originally did my undergrad and my PhD at the University of Southampton in the National Ocean Health Centre in the UK. And then I came out here to do a two-year postdoc. Um, me and my boss got on so well with each other and we were producing such great work that she said, do you like to get a work visa and stay here? Um, so now I've been working at the CSIR about six years um, and going out regularly on research cruises down to Antarctica to try and figure out how climate change is impacting the microscopic marine plants, which are hugely important as I was emphasizing in my talk. And I think that was one of my main goals is that the word phytoplankton is not a word that people have to come across in everyday conversations, but the role they play in our global system is so important. So, you know, phytoplankton are the reason why we actually have a livable planet to begin with. They were the ones who first evolved the process of photosynthesis and started to produce oxygen. Prior to that, it was a very much uninhabitable rock with methane and other poisonous gases filling the atmosphere. So then they evolved oxygen, they, sorry, they evolved photosynthesis and they produced oxygen. And that became the basis of all life. And through them is how they eventually migrated to become plants on land and encouraged other organisms to start leaving the ocean and also moving onto the land at the same time. Um, so on a more modern day society is that, you know, they have the power to control our global climate in one way or the other. If we keep jeopardizing the ocean system, not only is it going to impact people on an individual basis, if you think about the blue economy, phytoplankton are the basis of that marine food chain. You know, do you like eating sushi? Although I would not recommend eating certain types of sushi because of the fishes being on endangered species list. But you could see pretty much all seafood disappear from our diets entirely because their food source is, will disappear if we do not act now to change climate change. If we act now, what should we do? Stop emitting CO2. It is, whenever we, so there's a quote by a climate scientist called David Ho <clears throat> that I love, because he speaks about the fact that any time in human history where we have released a pollutant into the environment, we have never been able to develop the technology to remove it. The easiest and most simplest way to deal with that pollutant is one, stop emitting it, and two, let nature take care of the cleanup. And he uses chlorofluorocarbons as the perfect example. There was a global moratorium. We stopped putting CFCs in our refrigerators. A few decades later, the negative impacts of CFCs are pretty much almost gone. Carbon dioxide is probably gonna take a lot longer than a few decades, but the natural system will find a way to heat itself, but only if we give it a chance to start that healing process.